Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on how to hack. So right in front of us, we have open web application security project, WebCode. So this is a vulnerable web application platform for us to run all our hacking techniques on. So again, a big disclaimer, all right, hacking is illegal and it could get you in trouble. So ensure that you have explicit written consent before you run any of these hacking techniques that you'll learn in today's tutorial, okay? So right here on the left side, we have malicious execution. So go ahead and click onto malicious file execution. All right. So once you're in, what we can see here is that there is an image storage. So in a lot of sites, you have a feature for you to upload like photos, videos, documents, Excel sheets, PowerPoint slides, and many different kinds of documents. So what is happening here is that there is a directory that they will be storing all these files into so that other people could access it or other users could view it and do some review on it and so on, all right? So what we can see here now is that we can go ahead and try to upload an image. So I'll go select, all right, upload a new image. And right here, I could perhaps upload something like, you've been hacked, okay? So let me go ahead and click Start Upload. So right here, okay, we can see the following you been hacked. So this image has been uploaded into the web application system, right? So it is stored somewhere. So one important thing is to do a right click and copy image location. All right, so I'll go ahead and open up a new tab and select the following. All right, so we can see the following. Okay, so it is on the following URL, all right? So we have the web code uploads. All right, so this is actually the location where all these uploads are actually planted to. Okay, so again, this will be the directory for us to upload our backdoor into. And another important note to take note of, right? Another important key item to take note of is to think about what kind of language is the application system or right, the website written on, right? It could be PHP, it could be your Java, right? And so on and so forth. So in this case, if we see Apache Tomcat, what is the likelihood of it being hosted all right, as a Java server page. All right, so in this case, just by reviewing on this, Apache Tomcat, so we can do a very, very quick search across the internet, and I can enter the following. Okay, so we can try to find out what kind of language does it support. Okay, so we can look at, for example, all right, language, and we can see here, right, so there's java.long, all right, so we can see all these error messages that people have been searching about that is related to Apache Tomcat. Okay, so very quickly, we could identify that this is running on JSP, right? So JSP, right? So JSP stands for Java Server Pages. So you can go to tutorialspoint.com and many different sites that could give you a learning about Java, all right? So what we can do next is to go ahead and go under malicious file execution. And I actually went to search quickly, and I want to thank Nicholas for actually uploading the following JSP shell or right, command shell that we can upload into a JSP site. All right, so in this case, we have the simple JSP CMD shell. So all you got to do is just copy this, all right, save it into a file. And what we do is we upload straight into the malicious file execution. All right, so going here, I have already created a file. So I can go ahead and browse to it, right? It's under my desktop and it was just recently modified. So I can go ahead and look at the following. So I named it as backdoor.jsp. Okay, I can change the name, whichever you want to. Okay, so I have it here, backdoor just JSP, and I can change the name and so on, right? So I can easily change the name to, all right, so you just use MV. MV is to move files. It can also help you change the file name. So in my case, I'll change it from backdoor to cmd.jsp. Okay, so what I'll do next is to go back to the file upload page. All right, select a new image. So a lot of times there could be certain upload pages or features and functions where you are allowed to upload other kind of files. All right, and in this case, what is happening here is that we are uploading a cmd.jsp, which is our backdoor. Okay, so before I go ahead and upload it, I wanna explain a little more about the code. All right, so in this case, what we have here is a HTML. So we have the import at the top. All right, so this is how you build the pages, all right, that is dynamic in the sense that we can actually run processing, all right, dynamically, dynamic processing that can then serve different kind of content to different audiences, all right. So in this case over here, we have the form method, all right, that's a get method, 
there's an input type. So this is the TXT and the name is CMD. All right. So this is going to be a key value for us where we input our instructions to be sent over into the web application server that would then get executed. All right. And we'll look at the bottom here. So this is the server side. All right. Server side code. And we can see if request dot get parameter. So if this is null, it will not. Uh, if it is not null, it will continue to execute the rest of the instructions. So we have command, and then it would check for the operating system name. All right. So if it is Windows, then it will run cmd dot exe. Else, it will run something else. Okay. So again, we can see all of the instructions here. All right. So there's an output stream, input stream that we can get in, and after which, that will give us all right the instructions or the output of the command that we can execute onto the web application server. So now I'll go ahead and click start upload. Okay, I'll go ahead and click start upload. And there you get there you go. Okay, we have uploaded the file into the web server. Alright, so all I gotta do is to go back all right to the following directory and all I gotta do is enter cmd.jsp, hit enter on this, and we'll be presented with the file that we just uploaded. So all I got to do now is to look at the commands, right? Commands with JSP. So what kind of commands can we try to put? Literally any operating system command, all right, that we can run against the system. And of course, the operating system could be running on either Linux or a Windows platform. So in this case, of course, during your information gathering, as you're scanning using, let's say, Nmap, all right, or any other tools to scan the device, you want to flag out what operating system is, is it running on. So you can do a very quick scan on it. So if I was to go back to say terminal, all I got to do is just do an MF scan, all right, followed by the IP address or the domain name. So in this case, we have the IP address of 182.168.0.118. Okay, so I can go ahead and enter that. Hit enter on this, okay? And there is, of course, a parameter or option that you can input to help you discover the operating system. So in this case, I can enter dash OS, all right? All right, so it's this the following. For operating system scan, it requires root privilege. So I'll use super user do and enter the password. Hit enter on this, and we can see right here, okay? Operating system detection, all right, and this is running on Linux platform, right? Running Linux 2.6.x, all right. So going back to the browser, now we can do some checks, okay? We can try to list directory. So I can enter PWD to print the working directory. So I can go ahead and click send. And right here, we can see the output, all right? We are currently on var lib tomcat 6. So there's a lot more things that we can do, right? We can kill off services. We can look at the list of process. We are able to shut down certain services. We can even change the username and password, and the list goes on, right? So once again, I hope you learned something valuable in today's tutorial. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll try my best to answer any of your questions. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.